Tune Grin Things are getting weird, things are getting tough. Nothing's making sense, but you keep on looking up. Ugh, Dr. Seuss. For most of us, Dr. Seuss is one of the most influential artists and writers of our childhoods. He's written countless books, both for fun and amusement, and some with the message that is meant to be conveyed at a younger level. Dr. Seuss was cool like that. He never looked down on children. He understood their budding intelligence and respected them for it. So then the pimp known as Hollywood managed to snag up this whore to make some money. In 2001, Universal Pictures made the first live-action Dr. Seuss movie as their interpretation of How the Grinch Stole Christmas starring Jim Carrey. This opened the doorway for other Seuss-based movies including Horton Hears a Who and their most recent endeavor, The Lorax. But before those two, there was another. Hollywood, in their black void of where you could assume where a heart would sit, figured they could make lightning strike twice, and try to repeat the same formula. Take a beloved Dr. Seuss book that children loved growing up, get a comedian that can be funny, but somehow has become tooth-grindingly annoying in recent years, follow that up by luring our childhood down a dark and seedy alleyway, and then proceeding to beat the shit out of us, only to leave us in a puddle of our own blood and urine, and then you get this movie. Whew. When you want class, you gotta think Hollywood. This movie deserves the Nero treatment, and I'm gonna give it to it. I got my flask in hand, let's break it down, let's review the cat in the hat. The fuck am I wearing this? In the valley that stretches from this hill to that hill, a city is nestled. That city is Anvil. Okay, you know what? I want to counter just to see how much this movie actually resembles the book. Don't expect that number to get very high. So Mom, I guess, heads on home where her two pissant children are raising hell. Sort of. Her son Conrad, played by Spencer Breslin, is raising hell while her daughter Sally, played by Dakota Fanning, is just waiting around for the shit to hit the fan. I gotta wonder, if Conrad was ready to stick a fork in the electrical outlet, would she just watch that too? Hell, to be honest, that sounds more fun than watching this. Fuck, where's my fork at? Someone lose a dog? So Alec Baldwin is our generic villain named Lawrence, but I'm gonna call him Alec because it's Alec Baldwin kind of pretty much playing Alec Baldwin. His goal throughout the movie? To bang the mom. So I guess he's the bad guy for wanting to get in her cooch. Well, look at her, she's pretty hot. Well, whatever, being such a smart mom, she leaves her children alone with a nanny who falls asleep all the time. Hit me! That's harmony! Hey though, screw that noise, man. Let's get to where this really matters. Let's get another disgusting scene that clearly shouldn't have made it into this movie, huh? What do you say? And absolutely no one sets foot in the living room or else. Or else what? You're gonna do what Larry said and send me to military school? Maybe if you just behave, I wouldn't have to consider military school. I wish I could trust you. I wish I had a different mom. Well, sometimes I wish the same thing. Dr. Seuss is the cat in the hat, destroying families and making kids cry since 1957. Nice. So with the mom out, the kids wait around eventually until the devil in his fursuit rears his ugly head. A monster? Where? <laughs> You know, to be honest, this is the only sane reaction we've had throughout the course of the film. Seriously, we couldn't even get this right from the book? In the book, the cat walks in through the front door, but here he just comes the fuck out of nowhere. Is it a metaphor? Maybe the kids simply forgot to take their antipsychotics and are hallucinating this tormentor? Meh, whatever, time for hijinks. There was this cat I knew back home where I was bred He never listened to a single thing his mother said He never used a litter box, he made a mess in the house That's why they sent him to a vet who cut off both his boo Boo, boo Boy, that wasn't fun, fun, fun He never learned you can have fun, fun, fun But that's his boy Oh, bite, can we have something that actually resembles the book in this movie? Fun, fun, fun No more rain, look, it's the sun, sun, sun So can't you Okay, that's one Well, two, the fish actually does say a line from the book
This cat should not be here. He should not be about. He should not be here when your mother is out. Okay, I gotta know who made this. DreamWorks, but they made. <laughs> Wait, what does that say? Tim Allen was originally planned to play the role of the cat. My dream is to give it the edge that scared me. Good God, it's like the cosmos itself was aligned to make this movie suck. Why, cosmos? Why do you hate Dr. Seuss? <laughs> and there you have it, the cosmos hates Dr. Seuss. Drink time! Cause you had a bad day, you take the one down, you sing a sad song just to turn Okay, where are we? Oh shit, thing one and thing two? Wow, something from the actual book, red box and all. And they wrecked the house. Pretty dickish, but still from the book. But wait, this is gonna be fucked up somehow, right? Listen, Convex, you probably don't wanna do that. Why not? It's just a crate. This isn't just any old crate, it's the trans-dimensional transporter later. It's kind of like a doorway which leads from this world to my world. But it says made in the Philippines. Yes, but not this Philippines. Look, now I'm not usually a rules guy, but this is a biggie. No opening the crate. No looky, no touchy. Got it? <laughs> Things front and center. Cool. Look, I know the children's book was short and even the Grinch added some extra content to pad out the flick, but why does this feel like I'm getting my teeth ripped out while the Grinch just felt so much more believable? Fuck it. So the dog, who's not in the book, has the lock for the box, which the fat kid decided to pick, which will now no doubt release unspeakable horrors upon the world. Or it'll just pad out the movie. Quite frankly, that's a million times worse than any evil it could truly unleash. Unless a sequel was warranted. So the dog gets away because Thing 1 and Thing 2 decide to toss it out the fucking window. Animal abuse! For kids! And the dumbass children go to retrieve their dog in the cat's car. Also not in the book. All while the dog was safely found by Alec Baldwin. Who again is just doing this to get in the mom's pants. You go, Alec. You get in that chick's pants before someone else does, man. I know it may seem like I'm overlooking a lot, but I'm really not. I swear on my copy of The Cat in the Hat. This is really it. There's just nothing but filler, and that's basically it. The story goes nowhere. It's basically working on a basis of, here's a set piece, there's a set piece, everywhere's a set piece, fucking E-I-E-I-O. So the kids do manage to get the dog back from Alec and make a run for it entering... What the... So the kids get the dog and get home, manage to kill out Baldwin, I guess. You know what? Give that man his fucking paycheck. He deserves it. And then we, um... Greetings, you've entered the CGI zone. A land filled with so much fake bullshit you swear you were playing some shitty video game. But you aren't, for this is... the CGI zone. So we get in some CGI bullshit, and there certainly is a lot of that. Are we sure that DreamWorks had any involvement? I mean, this looks like crap. Hell, even the worst DreamWorks films have at least good CGI in them, even if the story is, you know, shit. Also, this is a Universal movie, right? How about a plug-in for their shitty theme park? This is amazing! It's on the ride in an amusement park! You mean like at Universal Studios? <laughs> Chicken! We're in the money, broad sky is money. Old man, you wish him you are through, you cut us wrong. So the trio of stupidity get to the box and just need to close it in order to make all this CGI hell become undone. So the little shit, uh, I mean, yeah, Conrad, manages to get on the box, which clearly opened up a vortex into hell? Like, get, no, wait, it's, it's going up, so I guess it's into heaven? Man, if I was God, I'd be pissed. But now let's have some heavy-handed self-sacrificing crap. Wow, 
Wow, Conrad really changed and became heroic. But then I remember this. I wish I had a different mom. So personally, I'd say the kid should just go fuck himself, but whatever. Man, the house looks like shit. And the movie's almost over too, so can we squeeze in some more stuff from the actual book? Okay, good, good, but what about one more? <laughs> wow, seven, damn! You know, I gotta wonder, what if I made a counter that actually was counting up all the things that were not in the book? So the cat leaves, the mom comes home, she has a mild epiphany that comes the fuck out of nowhere. You know what kind of kid your boy is. I mean, who are you going to believe? You're right. I do know what kind of kid Conrad is. He can be irresponsible. Yes. He makes bad choices. Yes. Sometimes he makes me want to tear my hair out. Yes, yes, yes. But he's a good kid. And I believe in him. I wish I had a different mom. There's no love for Alec Baldwin, who must be wondering what is he doing with his life right now? And everything ends happily with the mom and her kids hopping on the couch. Everything is wrong. The acting, writing, tone, feel, all of it. This movie took something so good and transmogrified it into this... this... Schivosa. Who is the audience for this movie? Not adults, and yeah, sure, adults need to sit through it with their kids, but that's not your primary audience. It's the kids, the children like you and me. The adult jokes really need to be a lot more subtle. I'm not one of those idiots who think kids can't handle mature humor, but there is a level to it. There is a certain amount that you can really give and take. I'll admit, I find some of the crude humor pretty funny. I laughed like a brain jackass when I saw the boner joke. I mean, are you kidding? me? I live on a planet where we have a boner joke in a kid's movie of the cat in the hat. I mean, it's so wrong and disgusting that it's kind of funny. But the humor is too adult for the audience this is supposed to be made for. It's the same if you made a children's movie too childish for the adults in the audience. You gotta find that balance, that good in-between. Here's a fun fact for you: Michael Myers actually fought to keep the dirty hoe joke in this movie. Dirty hoe? I'm sorry, baby. I love you. Come on, cat! Really, to have this kind of adult humor constantly thrown in your face throughout this movie, it makes me really think that the people who worked on this simply think kids are stupid. That they think that kids can't put two and two together. Really? How stupid do you think a child is exactly? You think no kid can spell the word shit? Here she is, the super luxurious omnidirectional watchamajigger. Or S-L-O-W for short. S-L-O-W? Yeah, slow. It's better than the last name we had. Super Hydraulic Instantaneous Transporter. Oh, you mean... No! Oh, quick to the slow! <laughs> As for the effects, the CGI is crap. You'd think with a budget of $109 million, you'd think they'd make something a bit more presentable. Then again, Green Lantern had a budget of $200 million, and those were shit graphics too. The costumes look terrible. I don't know how, but Jim Carrey as the Grinch worked. It looked like the Grinch. But Mike Myers looks like Mike Myers in a poorly put together fursuit. Character-wise, this movie has no characters outside of two categories. Bland douchebag and annoying asshole. Mostly more of the latter, unfortunately. The mom, who, according to the ending credits, is literally credited as mom, has no personality. Neither does the fish, who I swear to god you forget is even in this movie. As for the kids, oh god. What a perfect example of why we should legalize abortion. It's gotta be these kids. They are both annoying assholes, but they can be categorized as two different variants of that aspect. Conrad is the kind of annoying asshole who knows he does wrong and simply doesn't care. Sort of like uh, Ted Bundy, if you will. The other is Sally, who's the kind of annoying asshole that sees that she is perfect, she can do no wrong, she's basically Mary Sue. But really, how do you sum up these characters? They're just Bart and Lisa Simpson. Plain and simple, what these two horrible kids need more than anything is a well-deserved visit by Senior Belt. I'm gonna whip you, man. 
Michael, why did you do this movie? If it was a favor to your kids, that's cool, man. I respect you for that. I mean, a dad doing a favor for his children? That's freaking awesome, man. But was it for the paycheck? I mean, let's face it, it's not like this movie was really banking as a good idea that you thought you were going to really make a cash cow on it. Michael's acting in this is just terrible, and really, it hurts to see it. It's like seeing Robin Williams being in clearly bad movies when you know he's better than this. These are talented men who are skilled at their craft at making some really good films, but then they just pick so much shit to star in. Here, you can tell, Michael is just getting through the motions. The cat character, you just want to murder every time you see him on screen. He's not charming, he's not funny, he's annoying and an asshole. He just treats people like shit and that's it, that's his character. This is just a vulgar movie. I imagine drunk, high, or otherwise, this film doesn't work. It's weird because people who worked on The Grinch worked on this, but you'd swear it was made by someone who doesn't even understand how to do a kid's film. A movie for kids can be good for adults. You got strong movies from Disney, Pixar, and DreamWorks that can really prove you can balance adult humor and childlike humor and make it enjoyable for friends and family alike. And I hate to go a bit dark here, but there is a reason why I actually sort of love this film. I know, kind of hypocritical, but hear me out. This film is a perfect victim. Really, this movie is perfect evidence that the movie industry is heartless and unsympathetic. Nothing about the book really made it into this movie. This was such a bad take that the Widow Seuss said that we won't be getting any more live action Seuss movies. From now on they need to be animated. Two movies in and they managed to fuck up a huge potential franchise for live action Dr. Seuss movies. Now yes, this movie is shit and it does warrant my shit metal, shoddy, heinous, imbecilic trash. <laughs> But it warrants something new. It actually inspired me to create a new kind of metal for this. And with that, I warrant this the new Childhood Crusher Coin. <laughs> this sort of special coin is to really show you if you ever see a movie that is based on something so good and so wonderful from childhood, and then Hollywood proceeds to take a dump all over it, that's where this metal comes into play. That's where it's warranted. I'm Nero and Jellison. Pray for me, people, for what I must do. Things are getting weird, things are getting tough. Nothing's making sense, but you keep on looking up. They tell you to be true, you're trying every day to keep it on the real. Still, you gotta find a way to make your mama happy, to make your papa proud. You wanna turn it up, but all you hear is toning down. So gather around, I'm here to say, you'll never. by its tail and hang on all around me are familiar faces worn out places worn out faces hide my head I want to drown my sorrow no tomorrow no tomorrow it kind of funny, I find it kind of sad. The dreams in which I'm dying are the best I've ever had. I find it hard to tell you, I find it hard to take. When people run in circles, it's a very, very bad.